This video presentation will introduce the service technician to the new features and service procedures for the Source 665 Kenmore Elite Year 2000 stainless steel dishwasher. Topics to be discussed in the presentation are installation considerations, theory of operation, component access, testing and diagnosis, and tech tips. Section 1, Installation Considerations, covers specific installation procedures unique to the year 2000 stainless steel dishwasher. For complete installation procedures, see the installation instructions in the literature packet provided with the dishwasher. In addition, a video presentation, Key Features and Installation Considerations, part number 8177916, is available which covers the entire installation process. Each location will present a different set of challenges that can be anticipated and solved before installation begins. Check the planned location of the dishwasher. Easy access to hot water, drain line, and electricity. Convenient access for loading. The dishwasher door should open and close freely. The opening under the counter should be square and the cabinet front should be perpendicular to the floor. Make sure the cabinet opening is free of intrusions such as braces or utility lines. Do not install the dishwasher on carpeted floors. An outside wall behind the dishwasher should be insulated to prevent the water line, inlet valve, and drain line from rupturing. The application of a horizontal pump and filter technology allows for the tub to be designed three inches deeper than current models. This deeper tub and longer door design will impact the installation process because there's less working space available underneath the unit. And correct routing and placement of the drain hose, water supply, and electrical wiring is critical. The tub must be level. Reduced water consumption of this dishwasher requires that it be installed level and plumb for proper water recirculation back into the sump area during operation. Do not remove the drain hose from the left side of the tub. This loop in the drain hose provides proper back pressure for the soil sensor. If the loop is removed, the dishwasher will not initiate automatic purge filtration. This is the end of Section 1, Installation Considerations. Review the installation instructions provided with the dishwasher. Section 2, Theory of Operation, covers basic operational features of the year 2000 stainless steel dishwasher. The washing action and performance of the Kenmore Elite year 2000 stainless steel dishwasher appears to be similar to previous well-featured models. However, it performs more work and maintains higher performance while reducing the consumption of energy. This is accomplished with a redesigned wash system using separate wash and drain pumps, a soil sensor and thermistor which monitor washing conditions, and an electronic control board which adjusts cycle functions to optimize washing performance. One or all of the following may be used to achieve the desired washing performance of a selected wash cycle. The automatic purge filtration feature may be invoked if the soil sensor detects excessive soils. This can occur during selected wash or rinse cycles. APF mode provides one or more purges of excess soils trapped in the soil accumulator at specific intervals in the cycle. The APF operates for a total of 10 seconds while the wash pump is operating in a wash or rinse mode. The accumulator screen will be cleaned from jets on the underside of the lower spray arm. During the first five seconds, the drain pump turns on and the fill valve is activated. This purges the soiled water from the accumulator and begins to add fresh water. For the remaining five seconds, the drain pump is turned off, but the fill valve remains activated to bring wash water up to the proper level. A second performance enhancement will lengthen the cycle by adding rinse cycles. This adds additional cleaning time to a regular wash cycle. In a third performance enhancement, the electronic control may call for specific water temperatures in the thermal holds of selected cycles, depending upon input from the soil sensor. In addition, the tech sheet found behind the access panel provides a common cycle time chart. 
This chart will allow the service technician to identify and track each operation of the dishwasher by timed interval. See Section 4, Testing and Diagnosis, for instruction on how to use this chart with the diagnostic routines built into the electronic controls of the dishwasher. Section 2 of the service manual contains a complete description of all the wash-rinse cycles and options available. This is the end of Section 2, Theory of Operation. Review the service manual at this time. Section 3, Component Access, provides specific procedures to service critical components of the dishwasher. Before performing any servicing of the dishwasher, disconnect the power from the unit. Replace all panels before operating the dishwasher. Failure to do so can result in death or electrical shock. Critical components can be found in three locations in the dishwasher. Inside the console, inside the wash tub, and underneath the wash tub. To access components inside the console, begin by opening the dishwasher door and removing the six T15 Torx head screws, securing the console to the door. Components accessible inside the console include the electronic control board, the door latch assembly, active vent assembly, and on split console models, the interconnect board. To remove the electronic control board, begin by disconnecting the ribbon connector and the wiring harness connectors from the terminals on the electronic control board. Using a flat bladed screwdriver, depress the holding tabs at the left end of the control board assembly while pulling up. The control board assembly can now be lifted from the control panel. In units with split control panels, the interconnect board is located underneath the control board assembly. To remove the interconnect board, unsnap it from the plastic tab securing it to the console panel. Disconnect the ribbon cables from the board after it's removed. The door latch assembly can be removed by lifting the holding clips on both sides of the assembly and lifting the assembly from the control panel. The micro switch can be removed from the door latch assembly by disengaging the holding clips and lifting the switch from the door latch assembly. Disconnect the wiring harness connector from the switch terminals after the switch is removed. The active vent can be removed from the dishwasher door by first removing the control panel. The four T15 torque screws securing the left side of the front panel to the door may need to be loosened before you begin to provide enough clearance for the vent assembly to be removed. Using a flat bladed screwdriver, Turn the diverter vent on the inside of the door one quarter turn counterclockwise to release it from the active vent assembly. The active vent assembly can now be removed from the front of the door. The detergent and rinse aid dispenser assembly is located in the bottom portion of the door. To remove it, begin by removing the eight T15 Torx head screws securing the door panel to the door frame. Remove the door panel from the door frame assembly. Disconnect the wiring harness connectors from the dispenser terminals. There are wires on the detergent dispenser and the rinse aid dispenser. Remove the hex head screw at the center top of the dispenser assembly first to remove the drip shield. Remove the remaining five hex head screws securing the dispenser assembly to the inside of the door panel. Lift up on the two tabs that hold the dispenser assembly in place and lift the dispenser assembly from the door panel from the inside of the door. Components accessible from inside the dishwasher tub include the feed tube assembly, the water inlet assembly, the overfill assembly, the sump and motor assembly, and the heating element. To remove the feed tube assembly, first, Disengage the feed tube from the mounting bracket at the top of the dishwasher tub. Then disengage the feed tube from the mounting bracket on the back of the dishwasher tub. Now rotate the internal rear feed cap clockwise approximately 25 degrees. The entire feed tube assembly, including the lower spray arm assembly, can now be lifted from the dishwasher tub. The feed tube can be separated from the internal rear feed cap by lifting up on the tab and pulling the pieces apart. 
The spray arm hub has left-handed threads and can be removed from the spray arm by turning it clockwise until it's free. The spray arm and internal rear feed cap can now be removed. There's a thin nylon seal between the internal rear feed cap and the lower spray arm hub flange. To remove the water inlet, begin by using a pair of channel locks to turn the water inlet bezel one quarter turn counterclockwise from inside the dishwasher tub. The water inlet can now be removed from the outside of the dishwasher tub. The overfill assembly can be removed from the dishwasher tub by first removing the float, and then the nut securing it to the bottom of the dishwasher tub. The assembly can now be pushed through the hole in the tub. The micro switch can be removed from the overfill assembly by opening the cover in the assembly and lifting the micro switch out. The micro switch can be removed without removing the overfill assembly from the tub. The heating element should not be removed unless it fails. All critical components of the dishwasher can be accessed and removed without disturbing the heating element. If the heating element is removed, replace it with a new one. Follow the installation instructions provided with the new heating element. The sump and motor assembly can be removed from inside the dishwasher tub. However, some disassembly is required from underneath the tub first. Begin by removing the access and tow panels if not already done. Disconnect the wiring harness connectors from the soil sensor terminals. Remove the drain hose from the soil sensor. Remove the screws securing the soil sensor to the sump and motor assembly and pull the soil sensor from the drain outlet. Disconnect the wiring harness connectors from the pump motor terminals. Pull back slightly on the locking tab that prevents the drain pump motor assembly from turning. Then turn the drain pump motor one quarter turn counterclockwise and pull it from the sump. Disconnect the wiring harness connectors from the thermistor wire terminals. Turn the thermistor one quarter turn counterclockwise and remove it from the sump. Disconnect the wiring harness connector from the wash motor terminals by squeezing on both sides of the connector to release the locking tabs. Pull the three sump tabs from the sump and motor assembly. The sump and motor assembly can now be lifted out of the dishwasher tub from the inside. Lift the entire assembly approximately one half inch and push it slightly toward the rear of the unit. Tip the front up and then bring the assembly forward and up to remove it from the tub. Note when reinstalling the sump and motor assembly, there is an alignment key that corresponds to a slot in the tub opening for proper orientation. Once the sump and motor assembly has been removed from the dishwasher, the wash motor can be removed. Begin by removing the 3 8 inch hex head bolt securing the wash motor to the sump. Turn the motor counterclockwise until it stops and then pull it from the sump. The wash motor may be difficult to pull off the sump. The volute will be removed with the wash motor. When reinstalling the wash motor and volute into the sump, place a small amount of rinse aid on the volute seal. Take care not to pinch the volute seal between the sump and volute. Be sure it is seated evenly. Be sure to reinstall the wash motor drip shield. To remove the impeller from the wash motor, place a flat bladed screwdriver into the armature of the motor. Take care not to nick or scratch the motor windings. Then unscrew the impeller counterclockwise from the motor shaft. Take care when removing the impeller not to touch the sealed surfaces. Turn the volute on the wash motor until the alignment screws line up and lift it from the wash motor. The separator screen in the wash motor port on the sump can be removed at this time. Replaceable components inside the sump can be accessed by first removing the four T20 Torx head screws securing the accumulator assembly to the sump. Remove the foreign object protector plate by removing the screw securing it to the sump. Remove the screw securing the inlet protector to the sump. Lift the chopper assembly from the sump. Note that the smaller diameter side fits into the sump. Pull the sump check valve from the sump. When replacing the sump check valve, simply drop it in place. 
The sump check valve will be seated properly when the inlet protector is replaced. This is the end of Section 3, Component Access. Review the service manual at this time. Section 4, Troubleshooting and Diagnosis, provides specific information on troubleshooting common problems the service technician may encounter. A self-diagnostic routine and a routine for rapidly advancing through a selected cycle are available. To initiate the diagnostic routine, press High Temp Scrub, Air Dry, High Temp Scrub, Air Dry, within five seconds. The door must be closed for the test to begin. The LED will display each step in the diagnostic cycle as it is performed. See the diagnostic sequence chart in the text sheet provided with the dishwasher for a complete explanation of each step in the diagnostic cycle. By pressing the pots and pans or start keypad, the cycles can be rapidly advanced. When the dishwasher is running in a selected wash cycle, pressing high temp scrub, air dry, high temp scrub, air dry, within five seconds, will enable the rapid advance feature. Now, by pressing the pots and pans or start keypad, the wash cycle can be advanced through each interval. See the common cycle time chart in the text sheet supplied with the dishwasher. This is the end of Section 4, Troubleshooting and Diagnosis. Review the service manual at this time. Section 5, Tech Tips, provides additional technical information the service technician may need in servicing the dishwasher. A wiring diagram and strip circuits are provided in this section of the service manual. This is the end of Section 5. This is the end of the video presentation, Source 665 Kenmore Elite Year 2000 Stainless Steel Dishwasher. Review the service manual at this time. Please rewind the tape.